At the same time, we got to turn over to domestic politics, what's happening here in America. It's primary season. We got a shocking new poll here. Let's put it up there on the screen. And what does it show? My God, Nikki Haley coming within single digits in a CNN poll, up 12 points since November. Trump standing at 39 points, Haley 32, Chris Christie 12, Vivek 8, and DeSantis Five. So Nikki Haley certainly surging, at least that certainly seems to be the consensus, and not just in this poll, Crystal, but in a variety of other ones that we have seen. And it actually fits, I think, with Trump's overall strategy. He no longer has been talking as much about Ron DeSantis. He's been talking much more about her. He took that opportunity on the pulpit to go after her for her slavery comments <laughs> about the Civil War. Man, I wish I'd been here for that. Let's take a listen. You know, they asked her about the Civil War. Why did it start? How did it start? She didn't use the word slavery, which was interesting. I don't know that it's it's going to have an impact, but, you know, I'd say slavery is sort of the obvious answer. I'm supposed to supposed to about three paragraphs of bullshit. Paragraphs of bullshit. have to be so damn He's funny. He's so good. You, know, you got to give it to him. <laughs> you, you have to hand it to him. Crystal, this, he gets to the crux of it. It's also funny because I, I haven't gotten to weigh in on this, and there's nothing I actually hate more than Lost Cause stuff. Mm. And so for her, she, I believed, didn't know or she did not have a real position on this. She in her head was like, well, I can't say it's about slavery because these GOP voters are so racist that they're gonna get mad at me for saying it. Whereas Trump is like, if slavery instead of three paragraphs of bullshit, and he's overwhelmingly more popular yeah. than her. Well, it's also it's the like context. It's such a disdain to voters. It's also the yeah. context of him being a New Yorker. Yes. And yeah, her being a point. South Carolinian who's like right. imbibed all of this weird lost cause yeah, bullshit just, where it's like, ah, I can't, I can't say it's slavery right. when it, even the way she approached the question, remember mm -hmm. she was like, oh, this is a tough question. Yes, I watched it. Like, she was like, well, it's, it's like, actually, it's not. not a tough question. It's um, like the most tough, it should be. Like you could say states' rights about slavery. It should want, be the easiest question of all time. But yeah, yeah Trump, unfortunately, <laughs> using his uh, superpower of humor there to great effect. Trump is the true master of this, uh, of this art. Now, we have seen Nikki Haley in her last ad in Iowa. This seems to be the way that she wants to, uh, she wants to draw a difference between her and Donald Trump. Here she's talking about a president with grit and grace, a different style, and not a name from the past while flashing images of the two. Let's take a listen to that. A president with grit and grace, a different style, not a name from the past. Your family deserves a border secured, an economy restored, a nation respected. Our moment is now. Our mission is clear. Let's save our country and secure our future, and let's move forward together toward our destiny in a strong and proud America. Pretty cookie cutter message there that you see, Crystal. Yeah. But the you know it's interesting that that's as far as she'll go whenever it comes to criticizing Trump. That's it. Just a name, not a name from the past, a name from the future. But I got to be honest, she's done extraordinarily more uh, better than I thought she would yeah. uh, in New Hampshire. It does, though, like I've always said, it kind of makes sense. She is the natural anti-Trump candidate. And she embodies everything from the past. So people who might have liked Dick Cheney and that type of politics, this is who you should vote for. Well, it's, after it's Ron kind of yeah. fell off and was like super awkward right. and not gaining traction or whatever, the donors all got behind Nikki. She had that that first debate, which was very effective, um, which, you know, she actually garnered a bump in the polls from her debate performances, mm -hmm. continued to climb from there, at least in New Hampshire. I mean, my question for you, like, I guess her theory is, all right, I was whatever, I'm going to lose there. And she even said something weird, like, New Hampshire will correct yeah, that's right. what happens in it. Iowa, which yeah. was like a little bit too much the quiet part out loud. But anyway, um, her theory is then if she goes and has this upset win in New Hampshire, that's going to completely change the game. It's going to show that someone else can win, um, and then she'll just pick up a head of steam from there and be able to, to mm. roll on through. I mean, do you think that there's anything to that case? Because... I uh, I don't really think there is, but let I don't, me make I don't either. Let me yeah. let me make the devil's advocate case, which is like you know Trump feels so invincible, and his whole reputation is staked on being a winner. And if Nikki Birdbrain Haley comes out and beats him in New Hampshire, a state that historically he did well in in the past. 
that that would be a real blow to him. And then that would open people up. You probably have everybody else drop out of the race at that point. It would be head to head, Nikki versus Trump. And maybe that will open people up to this idea that it's actually time to move on. If there's a case, that's it. I yeah. don't think it's practical, uh, but let's look to a little bit of history. I mean, it's complicated because you're comparing apples to oranges, but you know, Bill Clinton crashes in Iowa, comeback comes to kid. New Hampshire, the comeback kid, he gets the headline, goes through Super Tuesday, does pretty well, seals it all up, and he owes it all to New Hampshire. To this day, he says, that's where I you know, officially won the presidency. You could flip it though, and you can look at the fact that Barack Obama won Iowa, then he lost New Hampshire, but because he won Iowa, he's able to win South Carolina. So I can give two examples you know, where it did matter and yeah. where it didn't. I think for Trump, New Hampshire is uh, really the first primary ever won in the race. I still think he's probably going to win. There's also a big uh, question mark here. Are these polls even right, Crystal? How the hell do we know? You mm -hmm. could see mass movement toward, like, what if the final tally? If I recall in 2016, the poll was slightly off especially because the effects of a Trump win in Iowa have not been factored into this. So you have the inevitability argument about, oh, well, Trump just won Iowa, so we'll do something a little bit different here. There's a lot of contravening elements here where overall, I just don't think any of it matters because in South Carolina, her own home state, in traditional politics, she should drop out if she doesn't win. If you can't mm. win your own home state, you should never continue in the race. That's generally how it goes. So then we have Super Tuesday and Nevada, which you know come afterwards. Trump is you know crushing by a mile, and people forget California is now part of Super Tuesday. Trump is up in California by fifty points. I mean, it's just not even a a, a competition right now. So again, so yeah. I don't agree with this analysis, yeah. but I'm going to play devil's advocate and try to take Nikki's, Nikki's side here. So what worked for Barack Obama, why he had such a surge after Iowa, is it effectively created a permission structure yes. for a lot of people who right. wanted to vote for him but didn't know if he could really win, and black mm -hmm. voters in particular, and that's why he goes on to you know succeed in South Carolina and the rest is history. Um, maybe... There are some group of Republican voters who are kind of sick of Trump and kind of awesome. sick of the chaos yeah. and don't really want this dude with all these criminal indictments hanging over his head and all that, you know, he entails. Maybe they would like some sort of a break from him and to move to, you know, a, what does Nikki say? Like, not a name of the past. Yes. Maybe there's some group out there that feels like, ah, but everybody's with Trump and I just got to stick with Trump and we got to back up Trump because he's under attack from the liberals, et cetera, et cetera. And so maybe if you do see a state go for Nikki Haley, maybe there is some group that needs that permission structure to jump from the Trump train to the Nikki ship. If, listen, <laughs> Anything is possible in America, all right? So the real question— He's going to freak out if he loses New yeah, Hampshire. He is, the he only is. thing I would say is there's such high expectations for Trump at this That's point, true. He too. Could, if, he, if he wins Iowa but underperforms, that also is kind of a problem. You're not wrong. So let's say he wins New Hampshire by two points, and then she can have a you know a theory of the case or whatever, so why she could win South Carolina. We could see it, although I still don't think it's really going to happen. Let's also give Ron DeSantis his due. This is his last ad in Iowa. Let's take a listen. Wall Street funded Nikki Haley just said in New Hampshire. You know Iowa starts it. You know that you correct it. Haley disparages the caucuses and insults you. It's Ron DeSantis who embodies and defends Iowa's values of faith, family, and freedom. He's tirelessly working to earn your support. Donald Trump is running for his issues. Nikki Haley's running for her donor's issues. I'm running for your issues. I'm Ron DeSantis, and I approve this message. Okay, I mean, it's probably the best that he can do. Things not looking necessarily the best for him right now. But it's sort of uh, pathetic that he's even taking aim at Nikki at this point, Well, right? I, I think it's just it's that she's bleeding into— I mean, Here, can we please put C5 up on the screen, the maps, guys? Because this is his only chance right now. Where if you look at the two side by side, he clearly has done way more events in 57 counties. Yeah. But, Crystal, if you look at the number of events and the counties where he did them, I went back and checked. These are all the places which Ted Cruz actually won in mm -hmm. 2006. So he is trying to recreate the Ted Cruz victory of 2016 in the Iowa caucuses. What I would just say is that's a footnote to history for a reason is, guess what? It didn't matter. The only thing that ended up happening is Ted won Iowa and he won Texas. So it yeah. didn't exactly work out so well for him in the overall the thing is for DeSantis is this is a last ditch effort. He's hoping and praying for more of a surprise in the caucuses. But overall, if we can put the next one up, guys, the, the other maps, what's really sad about this is the overall decline of retail politics because Nikki Haley, she's done 51 events in 30 counties. I mean, look at Vivek. He's done 239 events in 94 counties. 35 years ago, that actually mattered. And yet, 
If you look at the polls of where he is in Iowa, it's like four, maybe 5%. The sad truth is, is that this whole visiting all 99 counties of Iowa and spending time on the ground, like season six or whatever of the West Wing, mm -hmm. that stuff just, it doesn't matter anymore. You know, yeah. it's all national. It all comes down to television and oh, the internet yeah. and what people are consuming and the issue set in terms of them attending an event. Yeah, sometimes it can be a relative predictor, but on the margins, doesn't really matter anymore. No, it doesn't. Yeah. The retail politics, the like traditional campaign yeah. events are basically like a Potemkin village for the reality, you know, to cover yes. the reality that your campaign is just all about media. Yeah, and if you misunderstand that, you just misunderstand the nature of modern politics. Uh, the one thing, I, I, the Iowa caucuses are unique in that because of the nature of having to go in at a certain time and this weird process and whatever, it does matter that you have um, effective organization mm -hmm. on the ground. And I genuinely don't know which campaign has good organization on the ground and which doesn't. I just don't know. I haven't, you know, I haven't seen much reporting yes. about it. I do know that the DeSantis campaign has been in complete disarray and they had this whole theory that they were going to run the campaign effectively through the super PAC. And then the super PAC was bad and lackluster and like not doing a good job and pissed off Ron DeSantis. And um, so that's sort of, you know, they had CEOs leaving week after week after week and a total leadership crisis there. And then they're like, all right, we'll use this other super PAC. So the, the top level signs that this is a well-organized campaign aren't there, but hey, I don't know. Maybe on the ground in Iowa, they've done a good job, effective job organizing, and that's right. what they're betting on. on it's it's I just don't know. possible. I mean, just to return to New Hampshire and to underscore, you know, we've seen this too. Let's put this up there uh, from ARG in the more recently uh, Republican poll. We could put C4, please, up on the screen. I mean, what you see here is Donald Trump at 37%, Nikki Haley at 33%. Chris Christie, I mean, he's actually at 10%. Previously, it was at 13. He's really screwing Nikki at Ron this point. Yeah, he certainly is. Ron DeSantis <laughs> is at five. Oof. Previously, it was at six. Ugh. And then Vivek Ramaswamy at four and five. So DeSantis, you know, competing with Vivek for the Jeb position of New Hampshire. <laughs> for the Biden position in long. New Hampshire. Yeah, right. hey, yeah, right. there, there you go. I mean, there, that's the case uh, for maybe why it might work out. But things looking pretty good right now, I think, for Donald Trump. The Nikki Haley uh, position and the victory that she would want to see is one where she would beat Trump uh, in that slight margin and it would lead to some sort of, you know, some sort of momentum about something in South Carolina, but there's just not a lot of evidence that bears any of it out. Yeah. I don't see it. We'll see how it happens. Yeah. You know, you never know, right? Crazier things have happened before. I will say, just to emphasize again, you know, it's difficult to say, okay, if this person drops out, then all their voters are going to go in one place. Yeah, nobody knows. But we know that the Chris Christie voters are not going to go to Donald right, Trump. Right, right. That one is, like, as clear as it probably gets. They're probably likely to go majority to Nikki Haley. And so it's funny that effectively Chris Christie, who was the most aggressive Trump critic in the race, may be giving him exactly the boost that he needs in New Hampshire in order to uh, prevail over Nikki. We'll see how it all plays yeah, out. The, and it, as you said, listen, we should take all these polls with a massive yeah, grain of salt anyway. I, I actually am excited to see because the last Iowa poll is going to come out soon. And we will see. We, it's always fun to compare that to the actual results. And you Usually it's not, I mean, it's close-ish, but it's it can be pretty far off. And that's just the nature of the beast, especially with the caucuses where it's like, if you don't get enough votes here, then you can do a second choice. It's such an insane system. And honestly, we should <laughs> it, uh, it do over bizarre. with it. But that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right. We're subscriber funded. We're building something new. We want to replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.